Hi everyone. Thank you for joining today. I'm Kuniyuki, Cloud Support Engineer in AWS. In this session, I will talk about some improvements for SRE support available in the 5.14 channel. First, what is SRE support and why and where it misbehaves and how it finally had to make it acceptable. What is SRE support? S3 Sport is a networking SCADA option added in the 3.9 kernel to implement high performance servers, and it can replace the traditional approaches used in the prior version of the kernel. Without S3 Sport, only one SCADA is allowed to listen on a given TCP port. So, if another version, another SCADA is listening on the port, bind or listen system call to the same port fail with the ELS in user. This Python script tried to create two server scat by calling scat bind and listen, which is called twice for each, and the scan bind paired with the error. To build the high performance servers and this constraint, two traditional approaches were often used before the 3.9 kernel. The first is to have a single layer process that accepts connections from a listening scat and distributes them to other worker processes. And the scanner is to share listening schedule within multiple worker processes, and they call the exception call to the same listening schedule. However, both approaches have problems and the high load. With the first approach, the exception call and distribution of connections can be bottlenecked. And also, with the scan approach, the exception call can be bottlenecked. Connections from clients are put into the listener's accept queue and queue is protected by spin lock. So the lock is contended by multiple exception calls. And such a connection, uh, such a contention can occur when the kind of put connections into the accept queue. So due to the accept bottleneck, this approach does not scale well on multiple systems. In addition to that, the second approach has another problem. With the first approach, the user can implement the logic to balance the connection across the worker processes. But with the second approach, each process waiting the accept system call, but the wait gap is not fair. So the connections can be distributed unevenly. To so address the these problems, the SRE spot option is introduced. It allows multiple scat to reason on the same port. This script tried to create two server scats as well, and it, has, it succeeds because all scats have resource support enabled. With this option, each process can have its own listening scat and accept connection from it. So the bottleneck is addressed in this way. Also, when the kernel puts a connection into an accept queue, it selects a listener randomly, so connections are distributed almost evenly. In this way, the SRE spot option addresses two problems. But as we can see the theme from the initial merge commit that introduced the SRE spot, the TCP implementation has a problem. Okay, then let's take a look at when the SRE spot misbehaves through two quizzes. This one. What do you expect to show up in your console when you run this script? First, server one listens to the unique port of the local host. And clients connect to the AD port of the local host. At this time, only server one is listening to the port, so the connection is added into server one's exit queue. And server two starts to listen to the same port. Then we close the server one here. Note that the connection from the client has not been accepted, and server two is still listening to the port. Finally, we make the server two non broken and call accept and receive system calls. Then, what do you expect to show up in a console? Of course, we want to see how it works, but unfortunately, we cannot see it. 
Instead, we will see the resource temporarily and available. And that means uh, this is E again, and that means there is no connection in the accept queue. So when we call accepted system, called accept system call, the server 2 did not have any connection in this queue. Now, where is the connection from the client and what happened to it? If you run TCP dump, you can see a reset packet is sent out from the server side and the connection is aborted. So there is a problem that even if server 2 listened on the same port, when we close uh, server 1, the connection is in the server 1's exit queue uh, lost. This kind of situation happens when we load server proxies. As we can see from Chris 1, when we close the listening skin, the connection in the accept queue are also lost. To avoid this problem, we have to do connection draining before closing the listener. Connection draining is to call the accept system repeatedly until we see the E again one. And it is step two and step three in the diagram. E again means there are no connections in the accept queue, so if we confirm the error, we can close a listener without aborting connections in accept queue. But SRE Pro still has another program. Let's move on to the next quiz. Quiz two. Okay. What do you expect to show up in your console when you run the script? First, the server one listen to the 84 of the local host. And the next is different from Cruise 1. The drawback as an IP tables loop that drops packets only with the act flag. Then client connect to the AD port of the local host. But the act packet is dropped and the three-way handshake does not compete at the server side. Such a connection cannot be accepted, so the connection has not been printed to the accept queue yet. Next, uh, server two start to rescind the same port. Then we close the server one. Here, Boris accept queues are uh, empty at this time. And then we remove the loop and wait one second so the same echo or arc is retransmitted. And finally, we make the server to non blocking and call accept and receive systems. Which message do you expect to show up? Hello world or e again? This time, also we will see the e again message. That means server 2's accept queue was empty, but server 1's queue was also empty before closing it. Then, where is the connection and what happened to it? If you run TCP down, you will see a reset packet again from the server side. So, there is another problem that even if server 2 listens to the same port, when server 1 is closed, then connections that are not in the accept queue are lost. This situation also happened when we reload server processes. And the difference between the query 1 is that before closing the listener, there is in fact request that does not complete through the handshake. In this case, connection draining does not work. The implied request during the handshake is not in the accept queue, so we cannot know the existence by the accept call. But as we can see from Chris 2, the implied request actually seems to be tied to a specific listener. And if we clone the listener, the request is aborted. Thus, even if we confirm the you gain level, when we close the listener, invisible connections can be lost silently. There are two major workarounds for this issue. The first one is FD passing. We can pass five disk lifters through Unix domain sketch with the same right type of message. In this case, uh, we need not close listeners, so the problem does not happen. Also, this approach does not need connection draining, so 
that we can apply the new server settings faster. But it has a downside. With FD passing, it isn't it is not easy to scale out or scale in servers. One of the millions of SRE reported that each process can work independently. That means the new reasoner need not interact with the old process to listen to the same port. That characteristic makes it easier to scale out or scale in servers by simply adding or removing policies. But if the passing needs interaction between policies and loses this merit. And if the passing is not for the listener, but it means it cannot close the listener. If we want to scale in servers, even then we have to pass the listener. Otherwise, connection failure happens. So if we scaling do scaling out, scaling in, and scaling out servers, we will see that the first and scan scaling out require different operations. For the first time, the process creates a new listener, but the scan time, the new process has to receive a listener from another process. And if a uh, configuration change happens and the new process listens on another port, the old process cannot pass its listener and we and it will have to close it. Then the problem happens and we cannot avoid service disruption in such a case. So if we use FD passing, we have to accept this kind of complexity. And another workaround is connection training, but it uses a BPF feature added for a solid sport and the 4.19 kernel. The we use port circle is a BPF map to which we can add listeners on the same port. And the new type of program is executed when the same packet is received. By calling BPF SK select we use port and returning SK pass, we can decide which listener in the map processes proceeds each connection based on its packet data. The extract SK Resport MD is passed to the BBF program and it contains packet data, packet lens, protocol, and etc. So with this feature, we can avoid such connection failure in the following steps. First, add a new listener to the map. And then remove the old listener from the map. This stops routing new connections to the old listener. And a wait for CNAC timer to expire. This will be set at one scans by default. Then we can ensure that all invite requests complete through a handshake. And they are put into the accept queue. Then we can do connection draining to block connections out of the accept queue. Uh, in this way, we can confirm that there are no connections tied to the listener. And finally, we can close it safely. With this workaround, each process can work independently, so we can easily scale server processes, and the user space logic will be simpler. But with, with connection draining, the processes with all settings remain longer, so it might not be desirable in terms of security. For now, we know there are two workarounds for the problem, but they are workarounds and not genuine solutions. The behavior that closing the listener avoids some connections is reasonable if only one scan is listening on the board. The kernel should avoid the remaining connection then, so in that case, such connection failures are acceptable. But what if uh, other scans are listening on the board? Why are other scans unable to accept such connections? So let's see how S3 Sport is implemented and where it misbehaves. To implement S3 Sport, we have to handle multiple scats on the same port and distribute connections. The scat bind and listen chess goals seem to work well, but when quiz one and two, the three way handshake and the cruise chess goals seem to have problems. So let's take a look into two parts. First, the three-way handshake. And when the kernel receives a packet, it looks up a proper sketch that can process it. Basically, the sketch lookup consists of three cups for the two hash tables. 
The first look at the Danny e hash that contains no listener that matches the whole tuples of the packet. But this time, no proper scan is found. Then, the scanner loop graph is done in L hash 2 for listener that matches the two tuple. And if no listener is found, the final lookup is done for L hash 2 with uh, one tuple. If resolution support is enabled, then uh, multiple scat may listen on the same port. So if the kernel select the first found listener in the hash list to process connections, it cannot balance the load. So for load balancing, the kernel must randomly select one listener on the port. For this listen, when a listener is found for the first time, the kernel stops traversing the list and do one more lookup. Another rootcap uses struct this software support, and it is allocated to a listener when a scat is found to a port with SRE support enabled. And it is shared within the listeners on the same port as SK for CB. And it contains references to all of them in the LA SOX. So if the counter finds even one listener in the hash 2 it calls the response select sort that picks out one listener from the same response pool. By default, the counter selects a listener randomly to distribute connections evenly, but it can be controlled by BPF. Yes, this is the feature used in the walk along to walk along for decrease two. And once a listener is found, the counter plays a small size to get that represents a connection request. This is kind of shin flat mitigation to avoid allocating much memory for suspicious packets that might not complete the handshake. At this time, the minus scan is typed to a listener through the LSK listener. Then, the kernel puts the minus scan into eHash so that the next stack packet is processed based on the request scan. And then, the kernel sets a synec timer. And finally, it sends a synec packet. And when the final act of the handshake is received, the kernel will find the min scat in the hash. Then, from the associated listener, the kernel clone a full size scat structure sub, and the kernel links it to the min scat as SK. Next, the kernel swaps a mini and a first get in the hash so that the packets after the handshake are processed based on the first get. Then, the scat transition to the established state. And then, the kernel removes the synapse time. Finally, the kernel puts the new scat into the accept queue and it finishes the hand handshake. At this time, the first get is acceptable and the new scat is only accessed from the accept queue. And there is another handshake done, TCP fast open. If the same packet has a TCP fast open cookie and it is valid, all the previous steps are done at once before sending Synac. So even if it is an in-flight request, it can be accepted if it has a valid fast open cookie. So each socket is linked like this. We can see there are two types of connection that is acceptable one and an acceptable one. The acceptable connection increases the established connections and in fact request with TCP fast open cookie. And an acceptable connection includes the standard in fact request. The important difference here is that the uh, acceptable connection can be lifted from the listener and an acceptable connection cannot be lifted from the listener. That means the acceptable connection can be fleeted during the call syscall and uh, an acceptable connection cannot be free at that time. So they are free after the crawl system call. Okay, let's see where each connection is supported. First, the crawl syscall calls resource for the desktop and it sets new to SK for CB. Then it moves the last get in the resource group into the closing listeners position so that the kernel never selects the listener for new connection. 
then it decrements the number of listeners. Next, the kernel will move the listener from the hash to, and then it changes the listener state to TCP calls. And it calls INSGSK listen stop. This function frees a mini and a first get in the accept queue one by one. So request get queue remove pops out the mini get and INS try to get uh, remove the first get from the hash and does some free now. And then request get could uh, free the mini get and finally sub could free the first get. This way, uh, acceptable connections are aborted one by one during the closed system call. After the closed system call, an acceptable connection is operated out. An acceptable connection can be referred only from the eHash or its CNAC timer. So it is aborted when receiving the final ARC packet or retransmitting the CNAC packet. When receiving the ARC packet, the kernel looks at the mean scale and checks its state. Then the kernel checks if the listener state is TCP recent or not. If the listener has been closed, INSGSK LKSK queues are all bad input, it's called. And it removes the means get from the eHash and removes the CNAC timer and then flees the means get. Okay, and when the kernel is transmitting a CNAC packet, it calls the grace get timer handle. That gets the means get from the timer. And then it checks the listener state as well. And finally, it calls the same function and frees the means get. As we have seen so far, uh, SRE spot works along the works along the step layer and when selecting the listener. And other behavior is the same with no real spot case. This makes the implementation simple. So if you know this, you might think the connection failure is reasonable, but it is still unacceptable. Then how can we make it acceptable? The connections are aborted in the three functions. If the SCAD has SRE spot enabled, we should check if another SCAD is working on the board. And then if it exists, we should be able to migrate the mini and first get from the closing listener to another. The resport group contains other listeners, so we can look up another listener in the resport group. But to look it up from the closing listener, I added some changes regarding these two functions. So, resport detect stock removed the listener from the resport group and said no to ask it for CB. And it is called just after close. So the respawn group cannot be accessed in all the connection failure paths. But luckily, it is also calling this get destroy. That frees a listener. A listener is not free until all of its main gets are free. So if we do not set no in the first call and we can access the respawn group from the closed listener in no connection for the path. But it is not enough because of the response flow. The response flow is called when the number of listeners on the board overflows the current limit. Then it allocates a double size for group and divides all listeners as carriers for CB. So the closed listeners as carriers for CB can be stable. To avoid this, we have to keep the closed listener in the Leesport group even after closed system call so that Leesport group can relate the closed listeners as scary as scary CB. So I added a new function and replaced it with the first list for the Dutch call sub call. It does not set new to as scary CB and it moves the closed get backwards in the Leesport LA to be copied by Leesport flow. With this change, the kernel can look at the respawn group from the closed listener when connection failure happens. And to work it up, I added respawn migrate sock, which looks almost the same as respawn flex sock. And it is called 
while and after closing the listener to select a new listener. By default, it selects a new listener randomly, but it can also be controlled by BPA. And once another listener is formed, we can migrate to get. In the first implementation, I reload the Alice recent directory to the new listener, but it is not safe in the unacceptable connection cases because another CPU may be referring to the miniscan. For example, two CPUs might rely on the listener simultaneously, and one, we, uh, one CPU can see an uh, inconsistent value. So changing our little listener has not been expected so far, and it is unsafe. This was pointed out by Martin Kvailov at Facebook, and he gave me a good idea. So directly lighting LSK listener is not safe. So we have decided to clone the miniscat and light the clone the one's LSK listener. Then we put it into the accept queue or the e-hash based on the connection types. So before migration, it will look like this. And first we look up a new listener by the use of my sock. And clone the main scan. Then link it with the uh, eHash and the accept queue for each. And finally, we can create the original main scan and migration completes in this way. Okay, then let's see how it works with the scripts in the quiz one and quiz two. Quiz 1 looks good. We can see Hello World message, which was lost before. And Quiz 2, we can see the truly expected message as well. But you might wonder why the scatter migration feature is controlled by SysCTL and it is disabled by default. So this is because there there may be listeners with different settings at the set stock of the level. Let's say two servers listen to the same port and only the new server is configured with the TCP save same option. If the option is enabled, the kernel saves same packet data to its first get. And after accepting the connection, we can literally read the data by the get stock of syscall. Uh, what if uh, scattered migration happens from the old server to the one? In the new servers at SETQ, there are two kinds of connections, and we can get the same packet data from the new server's connection, but we cannot get it from the old server's connection. So if the listener on the same port have different settings, scattered migration might break the application. And also, a BPF plugin might be attached to the listeners to define the looting policy for each connection. The kernel migrates get randomly by default, but this is not desirable in this case. So the migration feature is disabled by default for save. For such cases, I extended the existing BPF feature for SLE support with a new attach type. If the touch type is the new one, the BPF program is executed when a same packet is received and when the connection is migrated. This makes it possible to select a proper listener in the cases before. And when selecting a listener, we can know for which connection and from which listener the migration is happening. The SK is the viewsport MD. Uh, this SK in the viewsport MD is the Close the listener. And the migrating SK can be a mean sket or full sket, depending on the connection type. If it is an acceptable connection, uh, if, uh, acceptable connection then the migrated SK is full sket and it is an unacceptable connection. Migrating SK is a mean sket. So if you have different listeners on the port or attach a BPF plugin, then you can use the BPF new BPF attach type. Otherwise, just turn on the syscontrol node. 
like this is the final slide. Conclusion. So, closing the listener over two kinds of connections, acceptable and unacceptable connections. And skip migration feature is very well on the 5.14 kernel, and it, it prevents such connection failures when other listeners exist on the same port. And it makes hot loading easier and faster. Thank you. Okay, if anyone has questions, now is the time to do that. Any questions, anyone? Uh, I have a question here. So uh, thank you, uh, first of all, for this presentation. Uh, my question here, uh, when you talk about SO reuse port, how is it different from SO reuse address? Sorry, could you say yeah, I, again? Yeah, I'm sorry if you, if you couldn't hear me. So basically, I believe there is another like TCP option, which is called uh, SO reuse address. How is it different from SO reuse port? No, SO reuse address uh, does not allow multiple listeners on the same port. So SO reuse port can allow it. So this is the only difference? And uh, SRS address uh, makes it faster to reuse the port. So you can info, uh, you, so for such a case, uh, you can enable the SRS address and SRS port at the same time. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, any other questions? If there are no other questions, then we'll break till 9.30. Kuniyuki, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, thank you.